Hello everyone, I am Gabriel Riel and this is the Rise Atlantis Show. Today the topic of the day will be about... <clears throat> Can you believe it? I can't even believe it. This sounds very, you know, hard to believe, but it is true. Buzz Aldrin of um, uh, that NASA astronaut, I believe he's the one that landed on the moon and said the famous words, um, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Um, Buzz Aldrin, the one that landed on the moon, was asked a question of why haven't we been back to the moon and he responded because we never did now people are, are saying oh by what he said by that is because we never went back to the moon now it's weird because they say people are, that are trying to say that <clears throat> he meant to say we never went to the moon because we never went back to the moon are trying to say like that <clears throat> but it's weird because the way the question was asked to him was how come we have never been back to the moon and then he said because we never did so it's it's weird a lot of people could take that as because we never did go back to the moon or because we never went to the moon in the first place so <clears throat> it's very strange could have a double meaning uh, so that is the topic of the day um, and it's strange how the major news networks aren't talking about this. Um, this is a record-breaking, breaking news story here. You know, <clears throat> it's very strange. So that is the topic of the day. Okay, first news story is. Um, a ghost was photographed at a gulch. Now, what is a gulch? It's some kind of like a ravine. <clears throat> and it's weird because it's named Devil's Gulch in South Dakota. Um, a tourist took pictures while visiting and saw the face of a ghost. <coughs> also features breathtaking waterfalls. This is strange. How it appeared at Devil's Gulch. The face, people are saying, skeptics, is merely a trick of light and shadow. Um, the f photographer that saw it says um, he doesn't he doesn't buy that. You know. Uh, local legend says that a frontier couple died at Devil's Gulch and in turn haunts the location to this day. I don't know what they mean by a frontier couple. A frontier couple. That's strange. What does that mean? Um, <clears throat> let's see here. So that is strange. And here it is right here. the face looking down to the right that is strange like looking down to the right so it's pretty interesting and the face looks sad <coughs> <coughs> so it's weird how it's at Devil's Gulch um, next story is um, Great Pyramid can collect and focus energy. Now they said this is what the pyramids were possibly built for as some kind of uh, ancient power plant. Um, <clears throat> but of course, modern day um, definitions, uh, not definitions, that's the word, modern day explanations of what the pyramid was used for is for tombs. And it has like a shaft of like a, not really a doorway, like a hallway going upward into uh, the sky from the center of the pyramid. And that um, <clears throat> the pharaohs that died there believe 
that their souls would be taken up through that shaft, you know, so. It's good to know the pyramids back then believed in some kind of spirit, some kind of soul, because nowadays with all the atheists out there, they don't believe in God at all, you know, so they don't believe in the soul. Well, there's so much proof out there, you know, <coughs> so. It is strange. Could have been used as some kind of uh, power plant. Um, let's see here. Um, scientists have recently found electromagnetic wave energy scattered across the pyramids. That's strange. Uh, so they're finding, um, not sure they're finding nuclear radiation, but they're saying electromagnetic wave energy. So they're not saying here they found nuclear energy. Like, uh, not energy, uh, nuclear, I forgot what that word is called. It's the same thing what's found in um, the crop circles. I think it's called nuclear... <coughs> The same thing as this right here, uh, magnetic energy, nuclear, um, the imprints, I forgot what that word is called. Well, it's not the same thing as nuclear energy from a power plant, but they get the residue from the nuclear uh, energy. Basically, I forgot what that word is called, it's called, um, um, it's the same thing they find in the crop circles, they find uh, nuclear Fragments, I guess you could call it. Leftover energy, basically. Um, fragmented energy is the best word I can describe it. Even though it's not fresh nuclear energy that you think would come from a power plant, it's like residue energy. So, um, <clears throat> they find that all the time. Uh, nuclear. Uh, I'm not sure they call it nuclear. I think they call it... Not atomic, it's something else. Radioactive, there you go. Radioactive uh, residue is found in most crop circles. Now, I agree uh, most crop circles can be fake. They can be hoax to people just planting those, um, those little things where they step on, you know? A lot of them can be fake. But if it happens overnight and is so large and so detailed, happens within a few hours, security footage showing no one there, then it could be possible, theoretically, that God could be showing these crop circles as signs of Jesus' return. Not saying Jesus is an extraterrestrial alien or anything like that. Um, <coughs> but maybe God could be um, showing uh, the world signs, um, and crop circles, for all we know, could be signs. So, I mean, hopefully we start to see crosses appearing in the crop circles. You know, some kind of other thing that looks different from extraterrestrial, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, we've seen uh, videos of, like, orbs moving around crop circles, and these orbs could be forming the crop circles. Now, it's weird because these orbs are like a spiritual... Uh, apparition they're not like a physical object they're like orbs like balls of fire basically and um, <clears throat> these orbs are made of heat of light and uh, of the holy fire basically and uh, I believe they are from God it's weird because in Revelation it says Fal false prophets will bring down fire from the sky perform signs so great even to deceive the elect so the whole fire from the sky thing um, people could say, oh, that's what the orbs are, that people say are UFOs. So it's very hard to say, could these uh, orbs be from God, you know, when a lot of people are so quick to say it's all demons and stuff, you know, so. I don't know. It's very hard to say if these orbs are of God or not. You know, there's no way to prove or disprove, you know, so, um. <clears throat> but my theory is that UFOs are apparitions. And <clears throat> I believe the ones that um, form the crop circles with these orbs, you know. Um, now, not all the time do crop circles need orbs to form it. It could just be like an invisible force 
that's that's pressing down on it. Because after all, how can it leave radioactive material behind? You know, so it's strange. Very strange indeed. And it's the same thing we're seeing here with the pyramids. They're probably maybe picking up uh, radioactive residue around the pyramids also. They're not saying if they found radioactive, but they're finding electromagnetic energy. So that could theoretically um, mix into um, radioactive uh, nuclear nuclear residue. So they're not finding that yet, but they found electromagnetic waves. So that's, that's strange. They're also calling you know they call it radio waves also. Um, so it's strange. <clears throat> the pyramids are emitting radio waves. Now there's no radio station in there or anything, so how could it be emitting it? Mysteriously emitting radio waves also called uh, what was it called? Also called electromagnetic waves. So that's strange. Next story is um, Death Valley will have the hottest month ever recorded on Earth at 127 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I heard that this blood moon that recently happened last Friday is bringing um, so much uh, heat across America, not just America, the whole entire world. It's causing this mysterious um, heat wave. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure if um, it says right here that it's never gotten 127 degrees in Death Valley before. But this is technically the hottest it's ever gotten. The hottest ever recorded on Earth. So, imagine if it gets to 130. 140 degrees. What next? 150 degrees? Is this the reason why we're seeing um, forests burning up in California? I thought at first that they must be um, probably by terrorists or something, echo terrorists who want to, um, <clears throat> uh, these arsonists that want to start fires in the forest. But then I thought, well, that's weird because if it was that, how can it be so common all the time, over and over? And how come they're never finding any arsonists? You know, that led me to believe this theory that I think it's getting so hot and dry in California. That the sun itself is causing the forest fires. I know it sounds hard to believe, but I think that's what's happening. And then people start to think of this question, well, if it happens in California, why doesn't it happen, happen in other parts of America and the world? If forests are being burnt up from the sun because of the heat and the dryness, why isn't that happening in Death Valley? I mean... For all I know, it probably is, but the news may not be talking about it as much of fires happening in Death Valley and Nevada. That they're always talking about the California wildfires. So if the sun is causing wildfires in other places of the world, then one, why isn't the world talking about it? And two, could it be being caused by the sun as well? You know, when I see on the news all the time, I always hear about California wildfires. I never hear about fires anywhere else in the world, let alone America. It's always just California. Now, why is it for some reason does it just burn in California and nowhere else? It's weird. We're seeing a Yellowstone volcano um, uh, possibly erupting. We're seeing fissures, as they call it, which is tremors. Um, like it's about to erupt and it doesn't, you know, it just keeps like, um, uh, erupting, but it never fully erupts. Like it's always at the, at the tip of eruption, you know, <clears throat> and it's weird because, um, they say if, uh, the Yellowstone volcano erupts, it could take out around four or five states around it. So it could affect California, it could affect Nevada. It could affect um, 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 uh, New Mexico, even. Uh, maybe Texas, I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> so it could affect other places. So let's hope and pray that God really subdues this uh, Yellowstone volcano. 
and stops it from ever erupting. Because if it were to ever erupt, man, we would see a whole lot of devastation, nuclear ash thrown out everywhere into the sky, but I believe God is powerful enough to keep that volcano dormant. Um, so this is strange. We're seeing a massive heat wave reaching the whole entire world here. It's starting in uh, Death Valley, Nevada, but it's reaching the whole world, basically. Um, and people say, well, if global warming is getting so hot, how are the uh, winters getting colder? Well, <laughs> it's, it's my theory is, I mean, yeah, that's the common question to ask when you hear of global warming. But when you think about it, the hotter the planet gets is the more the ice caps melt, the more storms happen, which means the colder winters will get. So even though the summers are getting hotter, yes, and it could be, uh, we're even hearing um, uh, rumors that the sun is heating up itself. So maybe the sun is heating up itself. How weird is that? Okay, so if that's happening, then we have compounded heat being caused on Earth by many things. Um, methane gas. Um, there's also, of course, the pollution. Not just from cars, but from factories. You know, that's why when you take a look at China, they have it really bad with all the pollution smog. You know, they're the industrial um, capital of the world. You know, and uh, they have factories everywhere. You know, they need to clean China up more and really throw those, um, <clears throat> um, how should I call it, those factories in China, move them away from the cities and throw them into the deserts of China where there's no people around, you know? I mean, it's really bad the way they um, industrialized China by um, throwing so many factories in the center of the cities. Now, there's cities, like even here in El Paso, we have one uh, factory, which is a western refinery, where they produce gasoline and oil, and it's uh, by the far east side of El Paso. Now, can you imagine a whole bunch of those all over the city. There was one called, um, was it Osargo? I think by UTEP here in El Paso, Osargo. They recently tore that one down. Now, over there in China, they have just estimation like 20 to 50 factories all together in the city. They're like left and right everywhere. And they may be even more in some parts of China. Maybe even like 100, 200 factories. Can you imagine 200 factories in one city? You know, it just, it becomes too much. So, we're seeing, obviously, pollution making global warming worse. And we're seeing, um, not just pollution from the factories, but pollution from the cars as well. Um, and then you add that in with the sun getting hotter. And not just that, maybe even chemtrails. They say the reason they, they cause these chemtrails and so that they can blanket the sky to make the heat less to where it can cool down parts of the world. Well, that's basically playing God because the more you try to alter the weather, the more it could backfire. In return, could cause even more greater storms, hurricanes, which could make, again, the winters colder. So, yes, we are seeing the world getting hotter in the summers, but we're also seeing as a result of that uh, with the ice caps melting and everything, um, is the winters getting colder. So, <coughs> <coughs> most people think, well, if the planet's getting hotter, that would mean that the winters would get hotter. That's not true. Because of the increased storms and hurricanes, it has a boomerang effect. Basically like a yin-yang effect. Basically like a, um, you know, <coughs> it basically has, um, Everything affects each side, you know what I mean? So, um, even though the summers are getting hotter, it makes the winters colder by more storms and hurricanes and ice caps melting and everything. So, we're seeing an increased ice age along with a global warming effect. So, it's getting crazy, you know? Um, <clears throat> and there's really no solution to try to stop global warming and the winter is getting colder. Now it's weird how this spike happened during the blood moon. 
And they say maybe it's because of pull of the moon on Earth and this and that. That's what causes the ocean waves and all. Um, so there could have been a tsunami. Uh, thank God there was no tsunami during this blood moon. So <clears throat> that is crazy. Next story is um, Mars is frigid, rusty, and haunted. We can't stop looking at it. That for some reason Mars is just swirling with dust more than regular and it's just like I think it's a sign that you know people are planning to go to Mars to colonize it and I think it's a sign that God's saying you know what Mars ain't the answer here to the the future no Jesus return is the answer to the future you know uh, we try to go to Mars and try to terraform it make the planet habitable you know what I mean there's still no future in it when the madness of this world will be transported to Mars as well. So it just makes the universe a bigger mess than what it is here with just Earth of mess as it is. So I think God is showing the world that all these atheists who believe that they want to um, <clears throat> live forever as a robot or cloning themselves like Rael says um, and living over there in Mars, they think that's uh, their future. Uh, little do they know that <clears throat> there's no future on Mars, basically. that The planets out there are just decoration, you know? They are not going to be our homes. Just like Jesus said, this world is not our home. The kingdom of heaven is our home. So, all these atheists, they see like, oh, they want to uh, avoid death, bypass it. Hack death itself. The hack death itself and... Um, basically find oh, another way to live forever through a robot or through human cloning you know now we, if we all try to live forever as robots we're all going to run out of resources and you know it's also getting crazy enough you can't trust a robot what if it goes haywire and starts killing people you know so it's my theory that there may be a law to try to ban robots itself now, I know it's hard because they're already doing it in Japan left and right, so people are going <clears> to <throat> say that they they have a right to um, allow robots into the, uh, America, you know. Next story, string theory may create far fewer universes than thought. I never thought about this. You know, string theory, I believe, is when the universe expands, and as it expands, the uh, I'm not sure if they say the Big Bang, was it a slow explosion or a fast explosion? If it was a slow explosion, is it accelerating or slowing down? Just like if it was a fast explosion, is it accelerating or slowing down? So if it slows down, could it stop and remain like that forever? Or could it even possibly cave in on itself? Could the universe theoretically reverse itself? Um evaporating everything in existence just you know just coming in you know um, <clears throat> basically um, reversing um, the out expansion and coming back inward you know <clears throat> so string theory is um, basically when you get to the end of the universe it's this dark matter that pushes you back it's like an invisible wall it's strange and um, <clears throat> Street theory is um, when it stretches out so much that not only do the orbits of the planets wobble off, um, but it also means that fewer uh, planets are created out of that. I had not thought about that before. So the, the farther off into the edge of the universe is maybe theory the harder planets can form. And of course... Um, they'll be wobbling off its orbit, you know. So imagine that happening with Earth, Earth wobbling off its orbit. Uh, but I believe God would return before that ever happens, and God is powerful enough to stop that. So, <clears throat> next story is. Um, $33 trillion, the true cost of the government-run health care plan. Now, this, this sounds like it's bashing um, Trump, you know. <clears throat> and I really don't like to get into politics, you know. So I stay neutral on politics. 
<clears throat> now, later on, if I have guests on my show and they're pro Democrat or pro Republican, I will always say that my view, their views are not based on my views. You know, uh, to let all you viewers out there watching know that um, I stay neutral on politics, so I don't uh, get any of my uh, viewers watching to get angry, like, oh, he's all Democrat or he's all Republican. You know, so that's why I stay neutral on it, you know. Um, I want as many fans as I can get, and I don't want to alienate any of my fans based on politics. So, I hate to say it, but I think I will never accept an endorsement deal. Even if they pay me a whole lot of money just to endorse a Democrat or Republican, I don't think I'll ever take it. Because I want to get as much fans as possible. Now, I've thought about what if I accept an independent endorsement, you know. Um, I, I endorse an uh, independent candidate to run for president. That may be an idea, you know. Um, a lot of people see that as selling out, you know. But um, the way I see it is, you know, because both Democrat and Republicans see it like um, it's just a wasted vote voting for independent. And <clears throat> you're not really supporting each of the other side. So <clears throat> the whole independent field gets a lot of flack from... Republican and uh, uh, Democratic, um, not just candidates, but uh, voters as well. Even the voters, uh, which could be uh, made of the fans of, of, you know, my people watching the show here. Um, even they could see it like, um, not just selling out, but um, basically um, uh Encouraging wasted votes is basically what they're calling it. Now, me personally, I don't believe an ind voting for an independent candidate is a wasted vote. I would all love us to see take um, the the plunge, basically, uh, and to taking the chance to vote for an independent. You know, I would love to see the day to see the first independent president. That would be awesome. You know, we need to see more separation of Democrat and Republican and just have like a, a unified um, political party here. You know? I believe that's the future. Um, I believe in the future there there may be no more Democrat and Republican. I believe it'll all just be, you know, all, all coming together as one thing here. You know, I think that's the future there. So um, this next story is... Uh, <coughs> Police finish up. Oh, wait, this is a different story. I hate it when this happens. You know, I click one story and then it brings up this other one. I can't talk about this story because it's too controversial. You know, I hate it when I bring up stories like that. When, like, I click a page to load it and then I go into it and it's all of a sudden some other story. I don't know how that happens. I mean, could it be a ghost doing it? I know it sounds hard to believe a ghost could change websites like that, but I don't know what's going on, man. It's very strange how that happens. You know, I have one story loaded, and I'm going to click on it, and something else, man. It's like, what? It really gets to me. I don't know what's causing that. This story right here, Iran is readying a massive military exercise in the Persian Gulf. So... All this talk of um, uh, Trump getting tough against um, the government of Iran. Now they're lashing back and um, starting their military exercises. And um, this, I believe this comes after the revelation that Trump said that no longer is America going to tolerate the government of Iran um, allowing propaganda speech and the government of Iran encouraging terrorists to take up arms and attack Israel, America, and the rest of the world. So I congratulate Trump on that for getting tough on not just terrorist ISIS, but even getting uh, tough on Iran. Now Iran is trying to lash back and all this uh, warmongering against America. So it's just strange. Iran is really going down a uh, downward spiral here and could be starting possibly World War III. <clears throat> Next story, Demi Lovato experiencing complications from a parent overdose. Demi Lovato. Now, I would never think that she would have gotten into heroin. Can you believe it? 
I believe she's a singer. Uh, she could be an actress. A lot of times they're doing both nowadays. <coughs> yeah, she's a singer. <coughs> but a lot of times, like I said, <coughs> they're starting to do both now, you know? That's the way to do it, you know? Um, don't just stick to one thing like singing or acting. Try to do it all, you know? Ain't nothing wrong in trying to do it all. Um, but, you know, once they start living that high life, all their friends encourage them to party every day. This whole call, quote, party, shouldn't have to be drugs, you know. Um, you shouldn't have to use drugs to have a good time. It's all a state of mind, you know. And it's like, <clears throat> these people are definitely weak in spirit. And they are slaves to drugs, slaves to the devil, and slaves to the world. You know, <clears throat> by falling down... Downward spirals like that. <coughs> and, you know, it's bad because when people are living the high life, they want to party every day. When people are down and out, they want to escape their troubles with drugs as well. So it's really bad, you know. Even people in middle class are just barely hanging on, you know, and they fall into drugs. People fall into drugs for so many reasons, you know. Uh, it, a lot of it's out of... Um, depression, uh, and then the high life, you know what I mean? So it's like, <clears throat> you could party every day without having to do drugs, you know? Um, so that's crazy. I would have never thought she would have gotten into heroin. That is bad. One of the worst ones. Health alert issued for salads, wraps from Kroger, Trader Joe's, and Walgreens due to parasite concern. <coughs> Now, most of the time we've heard it being called a salmonella, but now this is cyclospora. <coughs> That's crazy. <coughs> okay, I'm coughing a little bit more than today than others, just because uh, <coughs> I'm a little sick, <coughs> and I've been sick for anyone. Two weeks. Don't you hate it when you get sick and last so long? You keep taking all these um, pills and medicine to to try to um, get better, and it, it it seems like you don't do anything really. I hate it when we're sick. It takes two weeks to a whole month. Imagine being sick for two months straight, man. You know. I wish it wasn't like that. And last story: Swedish royal jewels. Stolen by thieves who fled by speedboat. They stole two crowns and what looks like two um, rods. And it's all gold, diamonds, and all kinds of jewels. And then two other helmets. Now most likely that was in some kind of museum. <coughs> <coughs> in a museum. <coughs> So it was an inside job because it was so easy for them to just go in, steal it, and go out. You know, had to be an inside thing. Someone inside the museum let them steal it. You know, um, this was in Sweden. Okay, so it's crazy. Now, they try to sell it, they're going to get caught, man. It's very hard to sell something like that, you know. So, I don't see what's the purpose of stealing it when they can't sell it. You know, it's pretty absurd, you know. They stole it for nothing, basically. Um, unless they try to sell it on the black market, which mostly they'll try to do, you know. And <clears throat> they can still be tracked through the black market, you know, so. They think, oh, it's a black market, they'll get away with it. Nope. It's not that easy. <clears throat> you know? So that is the last story. Uh, now, the topic of the day. So. It's very crazy what uh, Buzz Aldrin said. I can't believe it. 
but it's real. What he said is real. It's not doctored, not edited, not fabricated. This is real. What he said. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Buzz Aldrin. Said we didn't go to the moon. Can you believe it? Let me see here. Here we go. Now I know it's very hard to hear, so I'll go ahead and uh, say back what he's saying. <coughs> <coughs> okay. He has asked, why didn't we go back to the moon? And then he said, that's not an eight-year-old's question. That's my question. That's what he said. I want you to know why we didn't go. Because we didn't. Because we didn't go there, is what he said. And that's the way it happened. And if it didn't happen, it would be nice to know why it didn't happen. Because in the future, if we want to keep doing stuff like this, we need to know why something stopped. In the past, we wanted to... He said, in the past, we wanted to talk about it, but we weren't allowed. It's basically what he's saying. So he's saying here, because we did it. <clears throat> so I'll play back one more time here. When he was asked, why didn't we go back? He says... He says that that's his question also. <clears throat> why we didn't go back is what he was asked. And then he responded, because we didn't. Because we didn't go there. And that's the way it happened. So he was asked, why didn't we go back to the moon? And then he said, because we didn't go there. Now, people could be saying he's talking about because we didn't go back to the moon. His meaning was what he said, because we didn't go there. People are trying to, people defending him are saying, because we didn't go there. They're trying to say, because we didn't go there to the moon again. Um, <clears throat> but when you an uh, analyze it like other people, like me, for example, um, he says, um, <clears throat> why would we go back to the moon? He says, because we didn't go there. Because if you hear the rest of his uh, speech right here, it's very interesting what else he says. It would be nice to know why it didn't happen. It would be nice to know why it didn't happen. Now, again, people uh, would say, uh, he's talking about, it would be nice to know why uh, going back to the moon again didn't happen. Um, <coughs> <coughs> but if you uh, hear the pause in his speech when he says, because we didn't go there, he's saying, because uh, if you listen carefully to the pauses, is like... Um, you know how they say like body language and what people do like in terms of body language? Well, there's also speech language. If you analyze the way he's talking, the way he's saying it in gaps is like um, he wants to reveal the full thing like we never went to the moon, but he's doing it like in a subtle way, basically, like in a, in a parable form, basically. So if you li listen carefully, the way he talks in uh, gaps is a really big clue that he's saying it um, 
as the way it is. Like we never, we didn't go there ever. So if you hear it in gaps right here, I know it's very hard to hear, but here it is. Right here. Because we didn't go there. It's the way, exact way he says it. To quote him on his actual time of speech, he says, Because we didn't go there. A normal person doesn't talk like that. When you're talking about, like, you never went back to the moon, you say, Because we didn't go there. You would say it as it is, Because we never went back. Why is he saying, Because we didn't go there? That's not the right, you know, <coughs> one, that's not the right way to say it. When you're asked, why didn't we go back to the moon? The wrong way to answer it is because we didn't go there. Uh, if you're asked why we never went back to the moon, the right way to answer it, if you really did go to the moon, is saying because we never went back. Because, you know, we never really went back there. The question is, why didn't we go back to the moon? And then he says, because... We didn't go there. That sounds to me like physically we never went at all. When it's uh, re uh, responded this other way, um, why didn't we ever go back to the moon? Because we never did go back to the moon. Saying it like that uh, really clarifies that you did go um, that first time. So by him saying it like this, like because we end the gaps also. So one you take into account. Um, <clears throat> the way he's uh, uh, you take into account what he said when asked the question why didn't we go back to the moon and he's saying because we didn't go there instead of saying because we never went back I mean it's weird to answer a question like why didn't we ever go back to the moon because we never went back it's like you're not really answering the question there you know it's just basically like, like what's the reason why you never went back Instead of just responding, oh, because we never went back. You know, you never answer a, qu a question in the same form of the question itself. Do You never ask, answer the question, why didn't we go back to the moon with, because we never went back to the moon. You're just repeating yourself, basically. So, <clears throat> the way he said it, because um, we didn't go back to the moon, you know, <clears throat> is, is very weird, because you're like... Um, <clears throat> Most people would see it like if you answer it like that, you're automatically telling everyone that you never went at all. So, <clears throat> a person who really wants to have the world believe that they really went to the moon would not answer that question like that by saying, because we didn't go there. You know, if Buzz Aldrin really wanted us all to believe that they really went to the moon back then, would not answer the question of why didn't we go back, back to the moon. With the answer is because we didn't go there. If he really wanted the world to believe that we went to the moon, he wouldn't have answered it like that. But I think he wants everyone to know that we never went to the moon at all. And he's trying to say it in a subtle way for the wise to see. You know? Because um, <clears throat> um, he's old now, you know? And even if he were to say we never went to the moon at all, I don't think that anyone uh, would try to do anything. You know, um, maybe at that time, uh, was it the 50s, 60s when they went to, supposedly went to the moon? Um, even at that time, if he would have said it was all fake, uh, the most they would have done was just try to find him and throw him in prison or something. That's about it. Um, <coughs> <coughs> that's about it. Um, <coughs> so, it's it's really makes you wonder. You know, when you see video of the moon and the flag, why is the flag waving when there's no atmosphere on the moon? There's no wind, which means the flag should just be still. But on the video, it shows the flag moving. That's not possible. That video right there really proves for itself that it was fake. You know, a lot of people say it like... Um, they say, oh, it was from the the, the 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 spaceship itself that landed that caused the wind. 
Well, if that was the case, it would have stopped immediately after. So the, the flag is mysteriously moving around. And the way I see it is um, they try to make it look more extravagant than what it was by uh, having a fan blow on the flag to move it. There's no atmosphere on the moon, so there's no way the flag could be moving. Now, a lot of people say they see letters in C and A and B on rocks. I don't know. I really don't know about that because I've seen videos where it shows that. And I see the actual video and I'm not sure if I remember seeing that. So, I really don't know too much on that. But I know that the flag was moving when it shouldn't have been moving. Because there's no atmosphere on the moon. So, it's strange what uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin says here. Not just what he says, but the way he says it. You know? It's weird for him to say, because we didn't go there, instead of saying, because we never uh, went back. You know, when he was asked, why didn't we go back to the moon? If he really wanted us all to believe we uh, went to the moon, he would have not answered the question, because we didn't go there. He would have automatically gave the reason, oh, was money issues and this and that, or whatever it be. Why did he um, <clears throat> repeat the question with the form of the question itself? You know? <clears throat> <coughs> so if he really wanted everyone to believe that we went to the moon, you know, he wouldn't have um, answered it like that. And the gap also, because we didn't go there. It, like, it seems like he was trying to think about how he was answering it. Like, he was trying to say, like, like he, he wanted to say because we didn't go at all, but he was second-guessing himself. He was uh, second-questioning himself and saying, uh, no, no, don't say it, don't say it like that. Don't give it away and say because we never went at all. He, he wanted to maybe say it like that. That's why you hear the gaps in his voice. But then he um, told himself to um, say it in a different way, which is because uh, we didn't go there you know all robotic like he's a robot you know because we didn't go there you know it's like man i'm telling you it's weird you know very weird it is um so those two clues could be really a big revelation that we never went to the moon at all and the reason they probably faked the moon landing was to um beat um russia in the space race with sputnik and all and they wanted to be the first ones you know so maybe they didn't have the technology to go to the moon then, but they surely do now, you know. Now, why why haven't we ever gone again, you know? Because of money. I mean, not just money. What else is it? I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> Very strange, but the way he said it, because we didn't go there. I don't know. That's just way too strange. So, um... That is the topic of the day right there. How weird is that? This is a big revelation here. It really is. He told us we never went to the moon, but he said it in a different way. You know? So it still gives him that wiggle room to uh, not be sued. Because if he were to say we never went to the moon, obviously the government would say, Hey, you know what, Buzz Aldrin, we're going to have to sue you. Um, because he said we did back then. And now for him to change his story and say we never went, then that gives uh, the government grounds to sue him. You know, so he does. I know he doesn't want to be sued, because if he gets sued, it could be millions, multi millions. You know, it could take away eighty uh, percent of his money. So he's not gonna be that foolish to say that. So he says we didn't go back to the moon. I mean, we didn't go to the moon at all. He says we never went to the moon, but in a different way. You know, still allowing him that wiggle room to say, oh, well, what he said has a double meaning, you know, so. Now we're going to get to the EVP segment. Hopefully we'll get a few EVPs that talk about the moon landing here, you know. Hopefully we get a confirmation of the spirits of God here that says, yes, we never went to the moon. Here we go. Let's see what happens here. Activates the button to start a new recording session. Hi, my name's Graydon. Okay, here we go. So 
So hopefully we get an EVP that says that we never went to the moon. Here we go. Activates the button to start a new recording session. Activates the button to start a new recording I session. I hate that, man. Here we go. Stir. Do not hide. Five, four, three, two, one. Now every time we record these EVPs, it has to be all the way low muted. Because if it hears the words it's saying, it's going to read right back out what it's uh, he uh, hearing. <coughs> <coughs> so every time we do these EVPs, the volume has to be on mute. And these EVPs stand for Electronic Voice Phenomena. We pick up um, the voices from the angels of the Holy Spirit here. And uh, here we go. This phone has the words stir, like to stir, and then do not hide, and then in action. That means like uh, to bring something into action and then contracting. So something is stirring and the evil people are trying to hide. But Jesus is going to his uh, enact his, uh, his new world order. Uh, not the evil new world order, uh, but God's new world order. Um, so something is stirring, which is uh, evil is stirring. The evil is stirring in the world and evil people are trying to hide. But Jesus is returning to his, his, uh, enact his new world order and contracting. Uh, so evil people will be contracting the disease to hell, basically. Uh, this phone has the words, Toad Flax, uh, Timely, Chihuahua, Ula, oh, that is a hard word to say, Occidentalism, O-C-C-I-D, E N T A L I S M. It sounds like accident. Accidentalism, but it's with an O. Occidentalism. Rehearse. Lolling. L O L L I N G. That sounds like L O L, laughing out loud. Uh, controlled in giraffe. So, this is a lot of funny words here. Okay, so toad flax. What is that? Of a timely chihuahua. A chihuahua bark. You know, a lot of this sounds like um, nonsense, but a lot of times we do get real powerful words here. I mean, for all I know, this could be a prophecy, even though it's using a funny word like chihuahua, you know. Um, it's, it's hard, you know, to really try to decipher all this. Um, rehearse, lolling, controlled giraffe. I don't know. Something have to do with a uh, giraffe of a zoo or something? And then chihuahua dogs, what? I don't know. Weird. Rehearsing like a play or something? This is strange. <coughs> <coughs> so, I don't know what that means. We'll go ahead and do four more. Okay, we still haven't gotten one of the moon landing. Hopefully we'll get it here. 
I don't know. Did this one talk about the moon landing? What did this one say? Stir. Um, I don't know. It's strange. Okay, here we go. That was a weird one. Go to your room is what it said. This is my room. This is strange. Okay, I have no idea what it means. It's like the Bible code here, you know. Okay, let's see here. Um, this one got the words pretended, starched, brokage, Landenberg, ambush. Now, bro brokage sounds like brokerage, kind of. And a brokerage is where you go, like a bank for like stocks and loans and stuff <coughs> <coughs> but now you don't even have to pay a brokerage fee to trade in stocks they have uh, apps like um, Robinhood and WeBull so um, <coughs> <coughs> that is the future of stock trading which I'm recently getting into uh, so pretending something is pretending something starched a brokerage now it's technically not the word brokerage like for loans and, and stuff like that a brokerage like something is broken past term of broken could be brokerage uh, Landenberg sounds like a, a town or something and then ambush this could be a prophecy Okay, this it's very rare when I get prophecy like this. Uh, future events. Hopefully, I can find out when and where what this is. Um, I don't know what the words pretended starch and brokerage have to do with these two words here. But we're seeing the words ambush Landenberg. There could be maybe an ambush happening on Landenberg. Um, if it's a terrorist attack or a military attack a war or something um, I could do that really quick here let's see what um, Landenberg is let's see Landenberg let's type in Landenberg um. <coughs> <coughs> I believe I could be receiving a prophecy here of a prediction of something about to happen hopefully I could prevent it man I want to be the hero here you know we could all be the heroes here, you know. Landenberg. Okay, I think I spelled it wrong. It's with the U, Berg. Landon. But uh, Landon spelled the same way. Okay. Now, it could be with an E also, because a lot of times uh, it gets it a little bit off, you know. Like Nostradamus prophecies. You get it, you know, 95%. It's good enough, man, you know, so... Uh, there's a, a person named Alex Landenberg. Uh, he's a drummer for Syra. I haven't heard of it. It's uh, Lu Luca Turilli's Rhapsody and Mekong Delta. I don't know. It, it sounds like a band C-Y-H-R-A, Syra. I haven't heard of it, though. Uh, most likely a rock band is what it looks like. 
Now, um, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> there's a Landenberg Thalman Financial Service. They don't say where they're based in. Okay, so I'm really just looking for a, a land here because it's saying ambush. You know, um, it's weird. It does say brokerage here, though. It does say brokerage, and this is a financial service here. So I don't know where this place is. Uh, I feel I feel like you know if I could send them an email. I mean, it's hard trying to send an e uh, email to people saying, "Oh, this right here, this EVP tells me that this is going to happen." You know, uh, it's you know because a lot of times people say it like it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Like you say it and people go out and do it. You know, so I would like to send them. An email saying, you know, I think something could happen, but then again, I don't want to incite um, uh, not just paranoia, but um, uh, set off any red flags here. You know what I mean? So it's like it's very hard. You know, it's like when you hear uh, uh, EVP that says oh, something like this is gonna happen to someone. You know, you don't go and tell them, hey, this told me this is gonna happen to you, because they might take it the wrong way. You know, it's a, it's the same thing with this company here. You know, I don't want to be telling companies, you know, this is going to happen. I don't want them, you know, taking it the wrong way. So, you know, it's very strange. I don't know, man. Um, this is strange. Let's see here. Well, this is Miami, Florida. Uh, it's weird because this EVP here, it says brokerage, and this right here is a financial service. Miami, Florida. Okay, so even though it might not be about this bank, maybe it could be uh, something else happening in Miami, Florida. Could this be a bank robbery? <coughs> <coughs> now, the way I see it is, uh, I don't really have to... Uh, warn them with anything like this because they already have their security systems and you know what I mean there's no really point in warning a uh, company because they have their own security so uh, I would like to tell them you know, getting something strange like this but you just can't you know you just um, have to let events play out you can't really set off any red flags and stuff like that you know so it's strange Brokerage, Landedburg, Ambush. Now, you know, even though that bank is in Miami, Florida, there's so many things that can connect Landedburg to other things. Uh, like this drummer, for example, you know. Um, <clears throat> I mean, what else? I could go on finding so much other stuff. I mean, let's see here. Uh, there's a museum, Landedburg, you know what I mean? For example, it's just... I'm trying to find a land here because it's saying like ambush. Like it's talking about uh, a bank robbery is not an ambush. It's talking more like an ambush is like something like military thing. There's Landberg, Germany. <coughs> <coughs> so I think maybe something could be happening with Landberg, Germany. Because this is really the main country that's pulling up Landenburg. Um, Landenburg is. The main land that is pulling up is Germany. That was, uh, let's see here. So Germany. So I think something may be happening in Germany. Now, like I said, there, there could be uh, Landenburgs everywhere. This one is Landenburg, PA. I believe that's Pennsylvania. Um... So it's very hard to try to narrow in when I get uh, EVPs that could be possible prophecy, predictions of something, you know, possibly, you know, um, <clears throat> stopping um, any kind of tragedies, you know. It's hard to really pinpoint it and narrow it down to the most minute detail because Landenberg could be any place. <coughs> 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 so Landenberg, uh, Russia is the closest I can get to um, 
close as I can get to this, you know. Um, this is strange. Uh, let's see here. I need to pull up a quick. Landenberg, Germany. Pull up a quick um, map view here. Um, the most map views would be small. Um, it had to be a, a Google Images here. Um, so Landenberg, Germany. Because um, it's saying ambush. Um, now Germany is where uh, Hitler was. And there's still neo-Nazis there. Um, so hopefully they can stop all the neo-Nazis popping up. This is Germany right here, okay? And right to the no uh, northeast is Landenberg in red. <coughs> <coughs> so let's hope nothing happens in Landenberg, Germany. I hope um, any um, threats uh, get thwarted and stopped. So it's talking about uh, a brokerage, talking about maybe a bank in Landberg. And I don't think it's that other one, you know, because uh, you don't call a bank robbery with the word ambush, you know, so it's very strange. Um, so uh, that's all I have here. It looks like I have a prophecy that I could maybe help and prevent a tragedy. But I don't have anything to go on here. You know, that's the most I have. And, you know, it gets to me when I can try to be, you know, the hero here. And I don't have enough information. You know. So this other phone got the words, careful, go to your room. Very strange. And we'll go ahead and do the last two here. So I got, I think I got something powerful here. I just hope, you know... I hope I can get more information soon from the spirits of God here, you know, um, you know, to help me prevent um, any tragedies. I want to be the hero. And to let Christians know this is not occultism. I always pray to God every time I do this. <coughs> <coughs> oh, Lord Jesus, Lord God, please speak through the apps on these cell phones at this moment. Hallelujah. Please let us hear the angels of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Here we go. The last two. Ten more seconds. Okay. Gergeron? That sounds like Demogorgon. Stranger Things reference. Okay, so. <coughs> <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> Hopefully I won't be sick for another two weeks, man. Okay. <coughs> This phone got the words plowman, a man plowing something like snow. But what's snow in, in, in summer? Can you believe there's still parts in the world? Um, still have snow. Like by Russia and stuff. Uh, plowman inclination. That means like to have a feeling of something. And uh, just like I saw in that last EVP of a feeling something with Landenberg, you know, that's talking about, you know. This is confirming it with the word inclination. Orbital 
Philippicizing Poetical Beer B I E R uh, Setting Hiro Nyaman H I E R O N Y M I A N and Gurgion. So, what does it say here? <coughs> <coughs> okay, um, a plowman has an inclination of an orbital something, philippicizing, like King Philip of England, maybe, something poetical, um, of a beer, B-I-E-R setting, a hieroglyphics, maybe, it's talking about, and Demogorgon, I don't know, it's weird, it's talking about maybe King of England, um, uh, King Philip, maybe, after Queen of England, um, and then uh, the hybrids coming out through hieroglyphics and demogorgons. That's my take on it. And the last one here, we have the words perboric, p e r b o r c, p e r b o r i c, perboric, fillings, Sacramento, like Sacramento, California, and then fescue. F E S C U E, I believe, meant to say rescue and swallowtail. So, so periodic, I believe, meant to say periodical, like something happening in different periods, something being filled near Sacramento of rescuing. Okay, rescuing something in Sacramento could be the California wildfires, swallowtail. <coughs> <coughs> I guess the uh, swallowtail, the tails of the flames, are swallowing the, the lands, the, the forests in California. I think this one's talking about the California wildfires. How weird is that, right? So, we'll go ahead and end it there. Please like, share, subscribe. Please tell everyone you know to like, share, and subscribe. Strange stuff, you know. And, uh, let's just wait to see what happens with this Landenberg thing. Uh, I hope it's not a tragedy. Um, if it is, I hope and pray that I can get more EVPs, more information, or in a dream or something to help me um, divert any tragedies. So, um, you know, I'm trying to see the future here, and it's hard looking through a foggy mirror, you know. So, um, <coughs> <coughs> we'll go ahead and end it there. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you all. God bless. Good night. Peace.